competing with Apollo in the Soviet Union's own Zond program, a satellite, Zond 3, photographed the moon on July 20th, 1965. Zond 5, on September 18th, 68, went into lunar orbit. It is followed by Zond 6 on November 17th. The Soviets are next talking about sending man not to the moon's surface, but only around it in orbit. The race is on. NASA decides that Apollo 8, set to orbit the moon, will launch before the Soviets can follow with another Zond. Apollo 8 will not land a man on the moon, but it will take him to it. December 21st, 1968, 7.50 a.m. Instead, NASA decides to push Apollo 8 even further than originally intended, with less time to prepare and to send it around the moon and back. Since the lunar module is not yet ready for testing, only a service and command module will embark. Commanding Apollo 8 is Frank Borman from Gemini 7. Command module pilot James Lovell Jr. from Gemini 7 and 12, and lunar module pilot William Anders. Apollo 8 will launch and then go into Earth orbit. The third stage boosters will launch Apollo 8 from there into translunar orbit, which will send it circling the moon. After orbiting the moon, boosters will launch it back towards Earth. The patch for Apollo 8 reflects this, a figure eight that wraps around both Earth and the moon. Two hours and 27 minutes into their journey, Apollo 8 is a go for translunar insertion. The upper stage rocket fires and Apollo 8 becomes the first spacecraft to leave Earth orbit. Five hours after launch, the SIVB booster is let go and it floats into orbit around the sun where it will remain well into 2015. The Apollo 8 crew sends back live television footage that very next day of the planet Earth. The first ever seen from outer space. They are 50,000 miles from home, a home that is no more than a very small shape seen through the viewport. After flying for 55 hours, Apollo 8 enters the equigravisphere, where the gravitational pulls of both Earth and the Moon meet halfway. 14 hours later, they enter lunar orbit, after a tense four-minute ignition that, if it fails, can fling them past the Moon itself. The Apollo 8 successfully enters orbit around the moon. They send back more televised images, this time of the moon's cratered surface. On their ninth orbit around the moon, on Christmas Eve, the crew begin their second televised transmission, sending more images of the moon. Right here is a series of uh, cracks or faults across the uh the middle of the Mari, uh, they drop down in about three steps uh, to the south. The uh, parallel fault pattern to the north has a drop down in the center. I hope that all of you back on Earth can see what we mean when we say it's a rather foreboding horizon, a rather, rather dark and uh, unappetizing looking place. We're now going over our, approaching one of our future landing sites uh, selected in this smooth region to call the Sea of Tranquility. 
uh, smooth in order to make it easy for the uh, initial landing attempts in order to uh, preclude uh, having to dodge mountains. Now you can see the uh, long shadows of the lunar su sunrise. We are uh, now approaching uh, lunar sunrise. The last obstacle facing the Apollo 8 crew is trans-Earth injection. Performed from behind the moon, the crew will need their boosters to fire at just the right moment and bring them back towards Earth. The rockets will have to burn for just over five minutes to successfully send them on their way home. A failure will leave them stranded in lunar orbit. Mission Control waits with bated breath for word from the astronauts. The Apollo 8 splashes down six days after launch on December 27th. They have shown NASA, America, and the entire world that man can reach the moon. There is only one year left before he must walk on the distant surface of the moon and thus honor the wishes of our fallen president. Much is riding on the shoulders of NASA and its astronauts. Apollo 11, in which man will walk on the moon, is dependent upon the success of Apollo 9 and 10, both of which will test the lunar module. 